Well, let's try something completely different. The Blue Marlin, released by Hot B for the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1991. Hot B was in existence for about 10 years, from 1983 to 1993 before declaring bankruptcy, but along the way they developed several of these fishing games in what they dubbed their Black Bass series. Thanks to Lupine Tiger for suggesting this one. So, fishing games in general may not generate much interest, and that's okay. These types of games aren't for everybody, but I specifically have fond memories of playing some fishing game on a PlayStation 1 with my uncle. I don't remember which one it was, but it came with a fishing rod made up into a controller and my uncle, who was an avid fisherman, just thought that was the coolest thing ever. He definitely wasn't a gamer per se, but I think he bought a PlayStation just so he could play that game and go fishing during the bleak winter months of the Midwest. Anyway, the Blue Marlin on NES isn't going to make it on any top 10 lists or probably even any top 50 lists, but it has a certain charm to it in the form of interesting and complex strategy and and even some RPG elements. So the game takes place over the course of four days. You've entered a fishing tournament and the goal is to just catch the biggest fish in the tournament each day. When you start, you can pick from a few different locations, the coast of Miami or a few different Hawaiian Island locations. You can carry up to 12 fish in total and the tournament lasts from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Each day takes about an hour to play through and there's a running clock in the corner. No matter what, the tournament is done at 4 p.m. even if you're in the middle of catching a fish. So at a glance, this looks a bit like the NES version of Jaws. There's not a ton of space to cruise around in, so it's not like you're out on the open sea, which is what reminds me of Jaws the most. It's just like four or five screens. And the overworld graphics aren't much to write home about, but that's forgivable in a strategy game such as this. The manual gives you some specific tips on where to look for fish, but the gist of it is just drive around in your boat looking for flocks of birds, whales, or schools of fish. Drop your line in their general vicinity and you should be able to get a nibble on your line from a marlin or one of several other types of fish. There's quite a few different fish out there, although not every fish counts in the tournament. Only a marlin, swordfish, or sailfish will count. Pressing the select button brings up some helpful information such as what line you're running, the depth and length of the line, and what type of lure you're using. It gets pretty involved and you can switch these out on the fly depending on what you're trying to catch. Although, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing here and just kept changing out lures and line depth while dragging the lure around schools of fish or whales until I got a bite. It was a little bit of guess and check. Once you do get a bite, that's where the game gets really interesting and it switches to a screen where you have to reel in the fish. Again, the graphics are nothing special here, but they get the job done and there's a lot to this. The A button reels the line in, or attempts to, depending on how strong the fish is. The B button adjusts the tension on the line, which is indicated by this little lever that you can see going up and down. You can use up to thumb the reel and down to pull up on the rod. And you can also turn your player to the left or right if you need to. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of thumbing the reel, switching the tension on the fly, and knowing when you can make up some ground reeling the fish in, it gets to be pretty addictive. There's a few other things you can do too. If the fish is really fighting hard or starting to get away, or if your character is starting to tire out a little bit, you can push select to bring up another menu where you have the option to put the boat in reverse. Increase the tension on the line and put the boat in reverse to keep the fish from getting too far away from you, and after a while, he'll start to tire himself out. Then thumb the reel and start to bring him back in. The maximum length on the line is 512 feet, and after that, the line breaks, so be aware of that. There's other stuff that can happen during a fight with the fish too. There's these little cutscenes where you have to make decisions on the fly, such as whether or not to pour water on a smoking reel. It's not always set in stone what the correct answer is either, and this adds to the tension of each catch. After you catch enough fish, your character even starts to level up a bit with stats like strength and skill, giving you the ability to go after bigger fish the further you get in the game. It's pretty basic stuff, each stat is just a letter grade, but it's something. I suppose they could have taken it a step further and had you make money off of your catches to buy different types of lures or fishing lines, but ultimately it wouldn't make sense to enter a tournament without all of the supplies you need up front, so I'm glad they didn't go too over the top with it. So yeah, would I recommend the Blue Marlin on NES? Well, if you like fishing or you like strategy and don't feel like playing some ridiculously challenging shoot-em-up that only gives you three lives and no continues, give the Blue Marlin a spin. 
I have to say, I enjoyed this game way more than I thought I would. Especially once you get the pattern down and get your brain wrapped around all of the strategy involved in actually catching a fish. The approach that goes into each catch is stupidly addictive and it's just fun. Well, what did you think of this one? Did you play the Blue Marlin or any other fishing games? If so, which ones were your favorite from the 8-bit or 16-bit eras? As always, thanks for watching, guys. I, I really mean that. Your support just means the world. Thank you so much. Please don't text and drive, and I'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.